He knows more about the Jesus of the flesh, the historical Jesus, than those closest to him. Yes. And we, you as believers, all agree that that's true. And the whole world has agreed that that's true. Even Jews think that that's true. And um, here's one adjustment. That's the one thing I, I had to further know. My whole point in the James book was to say, who would have known most about Jesus? Those who grew up with him, those who spent all... I don't deny the story of Jesus. I just want to know who he was. And who's portraying him. We all know what Hollywood does to things. Now, I know this is the word of God. But Jesus would expect you to do the right thing by him, as I told you. So, you would expect to look at it. Look, if his brother is being mistreated, we have to understand why he's being mistreated. So now we have the issue. Joined between Paul and James. Things sacrificed to idols. Essenes care about this to the point of death, says Hippolytus and so on. Party of the circumcision obviously cares about this to the point of any sort of torture. Paul says an idol is nothing in the world, so don't worry about it. If they're just making problems about nothing. And then in Romans he says, uh, some people are so weak that they'll only eat vegetables. These are the weaklings of the world, the vegetarians. He's such a sweet guy. Paul is such a nice fellow, he's such a gentle fellow, he loves his enemies with such a, an enduring love. Anyway, some people are so weak that they'll only eat vegetables. That's a, that's a loving statement about his friends. Anyway, we, James was a vegetarian and stuff, so uh, this is the stuff, you see, it can be advertised. That's why we have to be careful. As someone can advertise that I love, and it could turn out that he hates. You know, and, and someone can look like he hates. And it could turn out that he loves. And then you have to be able to see through these things. The Superthematine says, be like good money changers, able to determine false coin from truth. And that's our job in these materials. It's really tough, really tough, because it goes against all faith and all things. But let's go back to that one point. In this issue, things sacrificed to idols. Now we have Jesus presented as saying, we'll get to that, maybe we'll return to that next time, um, a man is not known by what goes into his mouth, by what goes out of his mouth. What goes into his mouth just goes down the toilet bowl. Uh, um, and then he goes on to basically, he said this, one of the Gospels says, declaring all foods clean. That's the conclusion that we're to uh, take. I can't turn to it right now for I don't want to, we don't have enough time. But you know that famous, that's famous, isn't it? Everybody knows that fact. Declaring, well, he said this, declaring all foods clean. So, which side of the debate is he on right there in that passage? Paul. He's appalling. Now, what happened to James and his group and the Jerusalem church? Did they get dropped out along the way? Did they miss something along the way? Weren't they with him? Wasn't Paul wasn't even there at that time? I mean, are we having retrospective history? superimposed upon the historical Jesus here? Or is this an authentic statement of the historical Jesus? Follow me? This is the question you have to answer. I'll give you one other little, I've said it to you before, but you may have forgotten. You have to master all this data, put it together, and then make your decision. Where do I stand on this? Was Jesus a vegetarian like James? I'm sure he was. But history says no. He's a we have statements in the Gospels that say, and the Son of Man came eating and drinking. How many are familiar with that? And by eating and drinking, they mean he didn't keep dietary laws and he wasn't like James, someone who abstained from wine. The Son of Man, he wasn't a Nazarite. The Son of Man came eating, eating and drinking, a gluttonous man. A gluttonous man. Oh, those are favorite sayings, aren't they? Everybody, why? We all love people who are like us and permit us to do whatever we want. And we, we love people who are going to give us the right way. You know, we don't like people who say, you can't do that, you know, to the, and a gluttonous man. Oh, we're all gluttons, aren't we? Or we'd like to be, or, you know, we have to stop ourselves occasionally from being that. But that's a code word I submit to you. That's a code word saying a person who didn't keep dietary law. Those are code words. And it's part of the debate we're having. So did Jesus keep dietary laws? Well, it looks like he didn't, say the Gospel, right? We have at least two sections showing that, according to Luke, 
interprets that passage. I think it's Luke. He said this, declaring all foods clean. Clean. We'll come back to it. These are very important passages in the Gospels. And he came eating and drinking, whereas John didn't come eating and drinking. See, John was a Nazarite, like the Dead Sea Scrolls, like James. Uh, but Jesus did come eating and drinking. So Jesus and James are total opposites, in effect. Jesus is Paul, or like Paul, God forbid. Uh, I would don't want such a statement to come from my lips. Uh, that would, to me, be sacrilegious. For you, it wouldn't be. For me, it would be a sacrilegious thing to say that Jesus was like Paul. But in any case, that's something for you to turn out. I have prejudices, and I apologize for them. You, you're the you're the you're the judge. Okay, what's the final thing to me that gainsays this whole picture that we have? I told it to you before. The Book of Acts. Quite a mythological uh, 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 episode in the Book of Acts. But what happens in the Book of Acts that shows you Jesus never regulated the issue of dietary matters? They didn't like that. Peter. Peter, right? Peter doesn't know it. Or it's portrayed as unknown. And this is a Paul and Paul, a pro Paul book, let's face it. So, you know, what happens is Peter is being visited. You remember, he's on the rooftop in, uh, in Joppa. He's just been sent out on the first missionary journey, by whom I'm not sure, James or himself or whatever. He's confronted Simon Magus and Caesar in, in, in Samaria. And then he's on his way to Lydda, Lod, and then he goes to uh, Jaffa. And a Roman centurion from the Italica regiment. I give you pictures in my book of Italica in Spain. It's a totally voluptuous, you know, Romanized place, the birthplace of Trajan and Hadrian, total enemies of the Jewish people. Trajan's father fought in the war in Palestine. Uh, Trajan is men Trajan's father is mentioned as a distinguished a Roman uh, uh, a centurion or soldier in Palestine. You can look uh, him up in a good index of Josephus. They came from Italy and Spain. Okay, to my mind, this is an episode meant to uh, uh, ingratiate themselves with the uh, Italica people, the southern Spanish Roman city near modern-day Seville, where these later Roman emperors came from, Nerva, uh, Trajan, and Hadrian. Hadrian was responsible for the second war, 136, which was worse even than the first war in Palestine. In any event, Peter is portrayed as standing on a rooftop. Meanwhile, the Roman centurion in Caesarea is sending his servant to him because he, the Roman centurion prays all day, he fasts, he does good works, he gives charity to the whole Jewish people.